Okay, I'm gonna do a video on how I make my direct feed for my Yagi antennas. Uh, this is based off a two inch boom, which is I'm using a Mako boom. This one's out here just for demonstration purposes. Um, this board is a half inch star board. You can get it at Home Depot. I think I bought a four foot by two foot sheet so I could cut different things from it, but you don't, I think they sell a smaller, a smaller one. But if you wanted to build one of these direct feeds, and of course some of these antenna experts out there are going to say it does not work without a ballon. I've been running it directly fed, straight to it, no ballon, um, for 12 years on multiple different antennas and I've had no problems with it. But anyway, I cut this at 18 inches, 18 inches long, 6 inches wide. That line's just so I could find my center point. For my again this is based on a two inch boom you could do it with a three inch as well um, i'll show the other side in a few minutes this is your u-bolts holding it to the boom this is a bolt going through my elements i'm using uh, mako elements so they are adjustable uh, center piece is five eighths outside is three eighths i took the five eighths piece measured to the center of it cut it in half Flatten the ends in a vise on both sides. Drill the hole through it. The bolt goes through, and that's where your coax is going to connect. I will show you that side in a minute. So you would tune this antenna by lengthening and shortening both sides, as well as these two rods here going back. I, I run them back toward the reflector on the beam. You make up a bracket. This is a um, quarter inch by one inch wide, flat, flat aluminum. All these things I'm showing you, besides the elements and the mounts there, and this mount, you bolt. Those all came from Mako, but this piece, um, the starboard, these L brackets on the edges. I'll show you that in a minute. Those all came from Home Depot. So your other adjustment would be to slide this up and down these two rods and up and down the boom to um, make your adjustments. So these you can get at Home Depot. I think they're 36 inches. Again, I flatten the end, drilled a hole through it. Um, these three quarter by three quarter by I think eighth inch thick, I believe these are aluminum L pieces those are only on there for strength because if you tighten these down real tight it'll want to bow this board with the shape of the boom but with these L pieces on there it will not do that I did notch these out because you do not want these rods touching them actually they're not touching the boom these L pieces are not touching the boom so it might not short it out but either way I didn't want nothing too close uh, the distance obviously this is kind of self-explanatory you got to drill these to to match your u-bolts I drill these to match whatever u-bolts you're using so the only thing holding this element on is this center bolt which my coax is going to connect to on the other side and these u-bolts here that's all that's holding that on to this piece and i've never had a problem with them coming loose or sagging or birds landing on them and bending them nothing uh, i'll pause this and flip this over and show the other side okay this is from the other side of the starboard uh, where i all i did was screw these L-shaped brackets on the edges. Just screwed them right through. You can see where the U-bolts drill through, where these U-bolts come up through. And then this is how I connect my coax. You can put eyelets on your coax and directly bolt them, or you can use these aluminum or copper blocks, whichever you find. 
your coax comes up, you split it, you got to have enough reach so your center can go to one side, your shield to the other side. And between this bolt and this bolt, I measured seven inches. That gives me plenty of spacing. They're not so close to the boom that they're going to arc over. And that's what this piece looks like from the other side. Again, remember this piece is part of your adjustment to get your ohms and your, your SWRs matched up. I'll pause this again and show you on my analyzer what it looks like on my antenna. Okay, this is the nano analyzer. I'm hooked directly to my beam. 26, that's basically channel 1 is 1.1. 1 .1. You can see the graph down here. Uh, let me move this arrow. My lowest point is right there at channel 20, 1.0. 1 and I believe channel 40 is a little higher, but I never go up there anyway. That's not good. Trying to do three multiple things and I don't have enough hands to do it. Okay, channel 40, I'm at 1.3. So obviously I could make some fine tune adjustments and get that more even across the band, but I really don't care. I don't ever go up that high. Right there, right at channel 20, 27.204, 1.0. So that's running the the setup that I just showed you. That direct feed. Let's see if I can get out here and get a shot of my antenna. The sun's awfully bright today. I don't know if it's going to show up or not. Okay, you can probably see, I can't see, it's so bright out here I can't see my phone, but there's my direct feed element, and that's a 40 foot 6 element beam that I built. Mm -hmm. 